one of the joys of my life and traveling and driving a diesel is trying to get to a diesel pump and you can see this Lexus they just left their gas cap open I don't know what they're doing and they're probably getting Cinnabon or something like I, I'm out like we're close to out on the Florida Turnpike I'm probably fixing to get in a fight it has man fuel this doesn't need to be here some point but practice is here first time all year I'm actually thinking that I might have to use ice to like cool drinks off if we get bored with the bass fishing we're gonna get on the airboat tours and go around and chase alligators and film it and be more interesting than riding around in the fog trying to see them sunny Florida You know what? You pros think you can go anywhere. Cause you got all that money. And you go if I had money, if I had money, I'd be a pro too. So I was in Venice, Louisiana. There's Paul fishing in the Mississippi River, little Ranger aluminum boat. It's down near there. And it was foggy like this one morning. I didn't bring we took off papers up against there. my better judgment. Me and Big I D Money there. Almost hit a shrimp boat. When I say almost, like, like I changed underwear on him. He crossed our weight. <laughs> so I'm gonna get some rods out. You look like an Alabama fan. You can't make it up. This is what I get for just like, they're probably gonna win this tournament like just fishing areas that everybody else can, but I see a ditch on my map and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna go up in there. Stuck. By the way, do not ever do that at home. Don't don't uh, selfie video and drive. But make sure you're buckled up. If you have to promote your radio gig, make sure you're buckled up. But we're headed to uh, Maitland, Florida this morning, up kind of north of Orlando, uh, to do a radio show, a morning drive show, with uh, the Monsters in the Morning crew. It's supposed to be kind of a rowdy bunch we're here, and, and that's kind of what I normally like to uh, kick my boots around with so we're gonna see I don't know what we're gonna talk about I imagine the FLW tour tournament but uh, we're gonna see <laughs> if we get there uh, it's about 11 miles and uh, it says it's gonna take three hours because Orlando it can send me traffic so uh, if I lived here I'd just buy a horse just, just ride it 
because this is, this is completely stupid and I could get somewhere quicker on a dang horse. This is some top notch stuff right here. It's a high rent district. Gotta find out where I'm supposed to be here. Hang on. I don't really know what we're walking into to be honest. No clue. On low budget live at least I control it. Ain't no way I get kicked out of here. Dang doors locked. Some pretty spears. High profile celebrity such as myself. Get, this is the green room. They brought me into the green room. I walked around lost for about 10 minutes looking for it and then they just appeared out of the door. I don't know how I'm supposed to know, but uh, just in here. <coughs> Get ready. Get ready. Uh, in the book. That's good. How you doing, Luke? You're doing pretty good. It has nothing to do with Dunkin' Donuts, unfortunately. And, and you're here in town because in Kissimmee, there's something called, I've never heard of this before, though. It's the Fishing, the fishing League Worldwide, right? Yes, sir. It's uh, the FLW Tour, and it's been around for, for quite a while, about 30 years. We're filming this deal. We'll, we'll talk about that. The Traveling Circus is what we're calling it. Luke so it's Luke, Traveling Circus. It's Luke Duncan's Traveling yeah, it's Circus. It's on YouTube. I just wanted to show the highs and lows and everything we go through. But a lot of guys fishing, they see, you know, we've got wrap boats and trucks sure. and jerseys and they see the sponsors and they see a dude holding a big cardboard check and a trophy and they're like, man. Yeah, it, it's all that like is that. so it's awesome. Awesome. It's like any other great passion or skill or trait. It's the patience it takes to sit on that boat and learn the one, and right. learn the fish, That's and learn right. the area that I would never have because I don't have the love. Now I would love to go out with you and bass fish. That'd be fun. But it's the patience in anything that people can't handle in order to achieve what you're well, achieving. How many sponsors do you have? Because it's not just Ranger Boats, I'm sure. Because no. that's, that's the thing about bass fishermen is they, you know, you, you can get a sponsor for your, for everything, for your rod, for your yeah. reel, for your, so what, how many do you have? We look like Ricky Bobby. Yes. I, I would sell the windshield on my truck. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, this is a terrible idea, <laughs> but I do love my Ranger Boats. <laughs> Ranger Boats, Evan Root Outboards. Evan Root uh, Outboards. Uh, Costa Sunglasses. Oh, Costa, uh, shout out. TH Marine uh, out of Huntsville, Alabama. Eagle Claw Fishing. Yeah. Like hooks, rods, and reels. Garmin Electronics. Yeah, I'm we fished from January to uh, the last week of June this year, seven events, so they're really, really crammed in there. And then the championship, the Forestwood Cup, if you qualify the top 40 in the point standings, yeah. the Forestwood Cup, it's in August. Are there only, there's like seven majors, seven, basically? Seven, seven major events. Oh, uh, okay. So. Like, hey man, I could outfish you. I caught a fish one time like, way bigger than the biggest fish. Dude, I have a thing on my social media, I call that the mom's basement crowd. Mm -hmm. Hold up a fish and be like, I caught this seven pounder to be some dude like, we are holding it too close to the camera, yeah, man. Yeah. Too pounder. I caught, I caught one like that, and I always say he's like, you know, the Cheeto hands. Oh, yeah. He's like, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not a pro. The the thing about our sport is everybody does it, right? Yeah. And, and there are so many from 10 years old to 80 years old people that bass fish. So everybody with a, yeah. man, if I, the number one thing, if I had some sponsors, if I had more money, I could be a pro too. You got money, so you can be a pro. There's so much more that goes into it, and that's why I wanted to document it. But Dude, that is... Uh, hey, it was a pleasure to meet Absolutely. you. Next time you come in town, you got to come see us again. Uh, let us know about, about your TV show. Good luck this week. And, so and if, if you
write everybody's name on the flute. First one's always Ryder, my youngest. So that one's for old Ryder B. I won't lie, I picked up and it said TONG right on that same cast. I was like, uh-huh. You know, I, I stayed down here too long, but it was worth it! What is going on? Well, it's been an interesting day, to say the least. You know, you know I always have interesting days, though. They seem to follow you around, man. They do. I started this morning by, I, I thought I heard something fall out of my pocket when I was getting in the boat. It happened to be my cell phone. Yeah, so uh, lost that right out of the giddy. So we decided to name this the Traveling Circus. It's because my life is insane all the time. Just can't make it up. This morning, crawling in the boat, my phone fell out of my pocket. <laughs> Day one at Toho. And I pulled back into the lock this afternoon and Terry Bolton said my phone had been prank calling him all day long and every time he answered he just heard bubbles. <laughs> he enjoyed it. Hey, don't get... All right, here we go, day two. I'm sunburnt, I'm tired, but I saw so many nine pounders on Instagram last night that got caught yesterday. I gotta think there's one of them out there with my name on it or two of them today. Gotta have some weight to make a comeback, but we're fit to go do it. We rocked a Taylor Swift and not many fishermen do. And y'all don't even know y'all don't even know what you're missing. So I'm gonna listen to me some Taylor Swift this morning. And y'all can miss Besides the fact that it didn't go as planned, but that's how the sport goes. And day two was more of the same than day one. Got one good bite, not a lot more to go with it. Just never got fortunate enough to catch a seven or eight pounder, six pounder like a lot of these guys were. And my fish and my pattern just went away and it, and it really surprised me. Um, what I had planned, you know, I locked down to Kissimmee on both days, went down there, so I gave up, you know, an hour and a half fishing time, maybe, maybe even more, uh, probably closer to two hours when you really count locking both times. And to go down there and chase fish that I found the last day of practice, and, and they, they just left. There were still enough around to make it interesting <laughs> to keep me in there, but, uh, 
not enough. The most frustrating part of the last two days though is I did get a, a decent bite this afternoon. Pretty good bite, probably a five pounder. That's what it looked like. With five minutes to go, I pulled up really close to the boat ramp, pitched my bait in an isolated little lily pad patch in the middle of some kissimmee grass. Thought I saw the line jump, but there are lots of boat weight coming by. You know, it's almost check-in time. Pick up on the rod, fish is pulling down the pads, set the hook, get the fish out of the pads, into the kissimmee grass, and it looked like about a five pounder comes up, shakes its head, comes off. So that's kind of how the tournament went. That's kind of how the year has started. Um, finished 101st, you know, that's a that's an improvement <laughs> over Sam Rayburn, but it's not what we want, and that's not acceptable for me. It's not what I want to be doing. But we got five more. It's still a long season, and I, I think that we can get the ship turned around. It's just very frustrating to me at this point. I'm sunburnt. I'm tired. But I'm gonna get up in the morning and start thinking about Seminole, because here we come.